All right, so we have got the rear bar in the rest of the way, all the way around here. The next step that we got to do is we need to pick it up. Generally, it's going to be about two inches, two and a quarter, so that to make sure that the concrete can actually get underneath it good. But we've got it all tied together. Uh, we'll get it. We got to get it picked up the right height, so then we can then start adding in all of the uh, pieces that will go for the block. But we need to know exactly how you know about how tall we want to do those, and we'll have to have the rebar at the right height. So we're going to get started with picking it up. So there's multiple ways you can do this. Uh, you can use, if you have some scrap old brick laying around, what we've done a lot of times in different aspects is you can break that brick in half or even quarters and use that to pick it up. It's going to be the, the height of a brick is going to be about the right height. But if you don't have just some old brick laying around, which we don't really, uh, the ones that they did have that we tore out, they are not the ones with the holes in the middle, so they don't break real good and easy. So instead, you can use these chairs that are actually designed and made for the rebar. So they just uh, come in a bag. You can get them at Home Depot. They're two and a quarter inches tall. Like I said, that's about the height you want. And you're just going to want to put them every so often um, it's not really, it, it's mainly just whatever is going to seem to really hold it up well. There's no particular code on it. I'm generally probably going to do it at least every three or four feet. So, it's just a an I, general idea. Um, just basically picking it up and it'll just clip right onto it. So, that's what we're going to do. Then we'll start figuring out the uh, vertical uprights. So, see you in a little bit. All right, everyone. So, we got these chairs up. Another thing that we did real quick, um, because uh, with those chairs, they like to move. You'll see right here in this corner, we added a uh, piece of rebar. Those are some of the little cutoff pieces that were about eight inches long. We added another one right there. Uh, we did them probably about every five or six feet down through there. We just drove them into the ground until they were nice and solid and then tied the uh, rebar to it as well. That just helps, is helping keep that rebar from going like this, side to side. Helps hold it dead center. Um, and then what we figured, we were gonna go ahead and do. So we got the five foot wall in this section here. So what we're gonna do is for our upright rebar, we're gonna bend a three foot across this way and then five foot up. So we marked our rebar at eight feet. So we're just cutting that eight foot and then we're bending it at the three foot point um, if the that way those tops they should be pretty close to what we're going to need them to be later on we might need to cut them off a little bit later but that's no big deal um, and uh, even if we have to add on to them we can basically do the same thing we did here you just do that two foot overlap because uh, these uh, cells are going to be filled with concrete as well so we're going to bend some of those and then come back and start laying off that first little bit across there once we get to that section then we'll start doing we'll do nine foot pieces for here and we'll do uh, 10 foot pieces over there we want these as close to center as possible but we don't want to affect that line so we're going to you need to hold this level okay where it's level and don't mess the string you're on the string yeah. you got to basically get it in that corner where it's just barely not touching the string. Yeah, okay. Is that good? No. You're going off, yeah. That looks... 
next level. Okay. Are you touching this one or? No. Okay. Good. So then we're just going to tie it. I'm going to fold that that direction because the second one will go to the other side of the string. That way it keeps everything as close to center as possible. Which is, is where's the level this way? Just curious. All right, good. So this is going to fall. It's going to rotate. That's fine with the first one. Bring another second one over. So, and then the blocks are 16 inches. So, essentially, if this is in the center of one cell, then 16 inches over will be in the center of the cell on the next block. So that's where we're going to want to be with that. Need to hold the tape on that. Uh, the the farthest one. Remember, always measure from this. Whenever you're doing any of your measurements, you always want to go from the same point every time. If you're going from the end there, when you do that one, you want to do it all the way consistently across. Because if you get off with any one of these measurements, you're going to, and you don't pull from the same spot, and you keep moving to the next spot, as soon as you get off with one, you're going to continue that where you're off maybe one inches, two inches, whatever it is, you're gonna continue that from then on. Because if it was just this little mistake, you accidentally put it in the wrong spot, and then you measure from that spot, all the rest are gonna continue with that, that screw up. So always measure from the same spot. So we are needing to be at a 16 on center. We're looking for the first one that's after this mark, which is gonna be right there and I'm going to make a mark right here on the string I'm also going to make a mark on this piece showing that that's where that needs to line up the next 16 on center that we're going to need when that is lined up is going to line up with this one right there
So that's yeah. what we need. Like I said, that'll keep it pretty standard. Then we basically, we can just simply put them all in and lay them against it, one side, then yeah. the other, and that'll help hold. We might add a, another one in the middle of it, okay. but we're, we do have another scrap piece that's long enough for it. And so we probably will. And then when we get to the other end, we'll have to do something okay. different. But that's basically what we're gonna do. Uh, we got it straightened off and we're just gonna basically do that all the way around. Every 16 inches, there'll be another one of them pieces all the way around through, down through the other side. And then we'll probably, next thing that we'll have to show you is when we get over to the far ends where we have to do some rebar up and over for the higher footers uh, where the crawl space section will be. So, and of course we'll show you what all this looks like when we're done with it. So, all right, we'll see you shortly. All right, everyone. So. I ended up doing this section here at the same time as we were coming around here with these. I didn't uh, because just when I got back here and was had gotten to this point, I realized that it was just too tight. I wasn't going to want to try to get behind here and do it afterward. So did end up missing that while going ahead and doing these walls here. So of course you've seen all the rest, but all we did is uh, you see we basically did the same thing with here. We got that three foot overlap and then it bends up and comes up to where it will be about a same distance above this footer as it is down here, about three, four inches. And then we put the cross members in there again about every, on this we did it every 12 inches instead of every 18. So we did the same thing with this one right here same thing that three foot overlap and then it comes up and then it curves around and this one has the footer for the porch as well so with that it that's why it turns and goes that way just to tie everything in and then this last one which is bait really it's again just a footer that is designed for the porch so but it comes down so this one it's underneath here so you can see where it bends right there it goes that way again three feet and then it curves around and then comes up and bends that direction. So that's all that tied together. And let's get a shot from the back where you can see the whole walls and everything. Because, uh, so they're up. The uh, horizontal pieces that are there, those nice long ones, those are there just to help hold the verticals in line roughly where they need to be. Those will be just removed so that we can slide the cinder blocks down afterward. And we'll use the little uh, um, wire in be that ties the block together horizontally. So that's all of that done. And we are ready for concrete. <laughs> 